Hello and good morning friends welcome to CEC live lectures dear friends with the ongoing series on business research methods in our previous session we have discussed uh, tests such as f test t test now today in this session we are going to talk on chi square test and for this discussion on this test we have with us in our studios uh, dr namita rajput dr namita rajput is principal in sri aurobindo evening college university of delhi dr rajput is a dynamic professor who believes in giving more most of her experiences and knowledge to the students she has authored number of books and number of articles have been published in reputed journals she is a part of various international and national conferences seminars and she uh, actually participates through various platforms so that she could contribute immensely in the field of academics friends if you want to ask questions from dr namita rajput on today's topic then do call us through our toll free number our number is 18 00110430 I repeat our number is 18001010430 all dear friends are requested to call in the last 10 minutes friends let's welcome our guest dr namita rajput and let's try to understand what chi square test is hello ma'am welcome to the lecture good morning friends today i have a very pertinent topic to discuss called chi square test there are so many techniques uh, which are there in econometrics and uh, the research world of today that uh, there are a lot of issues which we have to discuss there are a lot of hypotheses which we have to test so this is a very important test to uh, understand about the testing of the hypothesis so uh, the contents of today's topic is the important terms which a researcher must understand followed by the introduction part of the chi square test the characteristics of the test the chi square distribution what it is the applications of the chi square test the calculations of the chi square how do we calculate this particular test to understand and come on to the interpretation of the results followed by the conditions for the application of the test the example the yet correction for continuity and the limitation of the test so in this backdrop let me start with the concept uh, uh, about the important terms which are used in this particular aspect so there are two types of test one is parametric and the other is non parametric the test in which the population constants like mean standard deviation standard error correlation coefficient promotion etc and the data tend to follow one assumed or established the distribution such as normal binomial poisson etc so this is the <clears throat> the first kind of a term which is very important from the research point of view that uh, the basic parameters the basic assumptions of the uh, the population is known to us and uh, the second is your non parametric test in which the conditions or they do not follow any kind of a combination or uh, any particular specific distribution and uh, the the concept of the hypothesis uh, what is the hypothesis is all about so we'll be taking one by one these aspects so the first thing which we have to discuss today is a parametric test the test which the population constants like mean standard deviation standard error correlation of coefficient promotion etc and in this case the data tend to follow one assumed or established distribution such as normal binomial and poisson etc so either the data will follow a normal distribution which is a bell shaped curve or the binomial distribution or a poisson distribution etc but yes you have to keep this in mind that the uh, the population will uh, the constant of the population will follow one kind of a distribution which is assumed or established distribution the second type of test is a non parametric test this particular test in which no constant of a population is used the data do not follow any specific distribution and no assumptions are made in this test for example to classify the goods the better and the best we just allocate arbitrary numbers or marks to each category so here you have to keep in mind that uh, the population constant uh, that is we talk about the mean the standard deviation the standard error the correlation they do not follow any particular distribution now coming on to the concept of what is the meaning of a hypothesis 
Hypothesis is definite statement about the population assumptions. That is we understand that the population is having this characteristics or population is having that characteristic. So, it is all about the assumption which we make as far as the population is concerned. Now, coming on to uh, there are two types of hypothesis. One is a null hypothesis and the other is an alternative hypothesis. When you talk about a null hypothesis, the null hypothesis as the name suggests, it is denoted by H0 and here we always try to negate a relationship. That is, we try and understand that there is no association existing between the variables under view. That is, the we are talking about uh, the two cross tabulated variables in the population and therefore the variables are statistically independent of each other and if we want to compare the two methods that is method a and method b for its superiority and if the assumption is both methods are equally good then this assumption is called as a null hypothesis now coming on to the alternative hypothesis the alternative hypothesis proposes that two variables are related in the population and if we assume that two methods method A is superior than method B then this assumption is called as an alternative hypothesis. So, in the previous one that is the null hypothesis we try and negate the relationship and try to exist that there is no association between the cross variables under study whereas in the alternative hypothesis we try and understand that there is a the two variables uh, uh, which are under the study of the population are very closely associated and related to each other. Now coming on to the concept of a degrees of freedom. So this particular concept is very important because we have to undertake a formula to find out the calculation aspect of uh, the parametric and a non-parametric test. So in the normal and the common parallels we use the word a degrees of freedom. As a researcher you must understand what it is and how it is calculated. So, in this backdrop let us have a look on this. It denotes the extent of independence or a freedom enjoyed by a given set of observed frequencies. Suppose we are given a set of an observed frequencies which are subjected to k independent constraints that is the restrictions. Then the degrees of freedom as is on the screen it is equal to the number of frequencies minus the number of independent constraints on them. In other words, we can say df denotes the degrees of freedom, it is equal to brackets open r minus 1 bracket closed, again bracket open c minus 1. You must understand what is c and what is r so that you are able to calculate a degrees of freedom. R is the number of rows, C is the number of columns. So, the degrees of freedom would be R minus 1, C minus 1. So, coming on to a different concept of <coughs> what is the meaning of contingency table. <coughs> when the table is prepared by enumeration of qualitative data by entering the actual frequencies and if that table represents the occurrence of two sets of events the table is called as a contingency table. The Latin contigration tangere to touch it is also called as an association table. So, when you are trying to find out a relationship between the two we try and find out a contingency table which is also called as a con together and tangering to touch it is also called as an association table for a name of simplicity. Now we are coming on straight to the topic of today that is the chi-square test. What is the concept and the meaning of a chi-square test? Now as the name suggests uh, it is uh, definitely a testing hypothesis technique in which we try and test the hypothesis whether to understand that that particular characteristics is available in the population or not. So starting with this backdrop we try and understand the concept and the meaning of a chi-square test. The chi-square test is an important test among the several tests of significance developed by statisticians. It was developed by Carl Pearsons in 1900. The chi-square test is a non-parametric test not based on any assumption or distribution of any variable. This statistical test follows a specific distribution which is known as a chi-square distribution. 
In general, the test we use to measure the differences between what is observed and what is expected according to an assumed hypothesis is called a chi-square test. So, there are certain things which we assume that this particular characteristics must be there in a population and the second aspect is that we actually observe the characteristics. So, the difference between the two is calculated by a chi-square test that is what is expected and what is being observed. The expectation and the observations are different from each other because we expect something else and when we actually uh, you know see the observation it is something else. So, if there is a difference between the two we call it as a chi-square test and we use it uh, uh, using a hypothesis which is there in the chi-square test. Now, coming on to very important characteristics of a chi-square test. This test as we all know is a non-parametric test. It is based on the frequencies not the parameters like mean and standard deviation. The test is used for testing the hypothesis and, and is not useful for estimation. This test can also be applied to a complex contingency table with several classes and such is very useful test in our research work. This test is an important non-parametric test as no rigid assumptions are necessary in this regard to the type of the population, no need of parameter values and the relatively less mathematical details are involved. So, this particular test is a very simple uh, test to calculate. There are no assumptions of the population. The constants of the population which are called as a mean and the standard deviation, they do not follow any kind of a pattern or a established uh, distribution like binomial, poison or a normal distribution followed by there are no mathematical uh, detailed calculations which are required to understand this kind of a test and uh, the test can also be applied to a complex contingency tables in which uh, several classes uh, are there and it is a very useful thing to understand for the research work. In the research of today, in the contemporary world of today in which we do a lot of uh, research work, this particular techniques is very frequently used uh, owing to its uh, simple nature owing to its le less calculations, owing to its less mathematical in nature and of course owing to its non-parametric nature because the non-parametric nature is a very simple thing and a very useful thing for the beginners uh, you know who have just started with their research work. So, it is very simple to understand, easy to calculate and of course it is very very frequently used in the many research areas of today. Now, come on now let us uh, have a look on what is a chi-square distribution. If you see this particular figure, uh, x1, x2 and x3 are independent normal variates and in each is distributed normally with the mean 0 and standard deviation as 1. Then x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square it is equal to sigma xi square is distributed as a chi square distribution with n degrees of freedom where n is large. The chi-square for a degrees of freedom 1, 5 and 9 is as follows. So, if you see here there are two bell shaped curves and one is a uh, you know the, the number 1 that is the degrees of freedom as 1, the degrees of freedom as 5 and the degrees of freedom as 9. So, you know this kind of a distribution uh, for 1, 5 and 9 degrees of freedom is called as a chi-square distribution. So, as a researcher you must understand that x1 square plus x2 square plus x xn square is equal to a sigma x1 square which is also called as a chi square distribution. Now, there are three important tips which I want to tell you. If the degrees of freedom is greater than 2 then distribution is bell shaped. So, if the degrees of freedom it is equal to 2 the, it is a L shaped with the maximum ordinate at 0. If the degrees of freedom is less than 2 and greater than 0, the distribution L shape with indefinite ordinate at the origin. So, these three things are very important for a researcher to understand because if he keep these things in mind, he will be able to interpret and analyze the chi square distribution very easily considering the degrees of freedom. So, if it is greater than 2, it is a bell shape, it is equal to 2, 
it is L shape, but uh, the ordinate uh, at 0, maximum ordinate at 0, but if it is uh, you know the uh, less than 2 and greater than 0, the distribution L shape with infinite origin at uh, the origin. Now, as we understand the concept, the meaning and the characteristics of the chi-square distribution, we must understand that it is such an important test that it has lot of applications in the research work. So now we'll be taking care of uh, the 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 topic called applications of a chi-square test. This test can be useful in goodness of fit. It can also be useful in test of independence of attributes. It can also be used for test of homogeneity. So these are the three very important applications of a chi-square test in which we have to calculate and understand the goodness of fit distributions in which we have to test the independence of attributes and followed by the test of homogeneity of the variables. We will be taking them one by one because these are the main applications of a chi-square test. So starting with the first one that is the test of goodness of fit distributions. This test enables us to see how well does the assumed theoretical distribution such as binomial, poison, normal fit to the observed data. The chi-square test formula for the goodness of fit is x square, it is equal to sigma O minus E upon E and the whole square, where O is the observed frequency, E is the expected frequency. If x square calculated and x square tabulated with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, then the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise accepted. If the null hypothesis is accepted, then it can be calculated that the given distribution follows a theoretical distribution. Now, the important application uh, as far as the chi-square distribution is concerned is a test of independence of attributes. The test enables us to explain whether or not two attributes are associated or not. For instance, we may be interested in knowing whether a new medicine is effective in controlling a fever or not. Chi-square test is very useful. In such situation, we proceed with a null hypothesis that the two attributes that is a new medicine and a control of fever are independent which means that new medicine is not effective in controlling a fever. The x square calculated is greater than x square tabulated at certain levels of significance for given degrees of freedom. The null hypothesis is rejected that is the two variables are dependent that is the new medicine is effective in controlling the fever and if the chi-square calculated and the chi-square tabulated the null hypothesis is accepted that is two variables are independent that is the new medicine is not effective in controlling a fever. When null hypothesis is rejected it can be concluded that there is a significant association between the two variables. So, the, these are the two important applications which we have discussed. The first was uh, testing the goodness of the fit and the second which we have discussed now is a test of independence of attributes. Now, we will be doing a very important application that is the test of hypothesis. This test can also be used uh, whether the occurrence of the events follow a uniformity or not. For example, the admission of the patients in the government hospitals in all days of week is uniform or it can be tested with the help of a chi-square test. That is we want to test whether the admission of the patients is a, a, you know, a regular feature as far as the hospitals are concerned or not. I mean we are testing in case of all days of the week that is Monday to Friday and Monday to Sunday. So chi-square calculated is less than chi-square tabulated the null hypothesis is accepted and it can also be concluded that there is a uniformity <coughs> in the occurrence of the events, uniformity in admission of the patients throughout the week. Now we will be taking care of the calculation part which is the most important part which the researcher must understand and must know. The calculation of chi-square test x square is equal to sigma O minus E whole square divided by E. O is the observed frequency. E is the expected frequency and if two distribution observed and theoretical are exactly alike that is x square is 0 but generally due to sampling errors chi square is not equal to 0. 
So, in this aspect we call it as uh, you know the main aspect and the calculation aspect of the chi-square test. Now, there are certain uh, steps involved in the calculations of the chi-square test. Let us have a look on this. The first is you have to calculate the frequencies and the observed frequencies. The first frequency which you have to calculate is the expected frequency and the second frequency which you have to calculate is the observed frequency. Expected frequency is the cell frequencies that would be expected in a contingency table if the two variables were statistically independent of each other. Whereas, the observed frequencies are the cell frequencies actually observed in a contingency table. F e is equal to column total the row total upon n. To obtain the expected frequency for any cell in the cross tabulated in which the two frequencies are assumed independent, multiply the row and the column totals for the cell and divide the product by the total number of cases in the table. Now, we have a formula in front of you. The chi-square is calculated as follows. The chi-square is equal to sigma f e minus f o whole square divided by f e. Now, we will be discussing certain conditions for the applications of the chi-square test. If these conditions are not met, then of course, we will not be able to apply the chi-square test effectively. There are so many important conditions uh, which are very important uh, you know, to be fulfilled before we apply the application of the test. The first is the data must be in a form of frequencies. This is one thing. The frequency data must have a precious numerical value and must be organized into categories or the groups. The observed observations recorded and used as collected on a random basis. That is there has to be no pattern in the collection of the frequencies. All the items in the samples must be independent of each other. No group should contain very few items, say less than 10. In case the frequencies are less than 10, the regrouping is done by combining the frequencies of adjoining groups so that the new frequencies become greater than 10. Some statisticians take this number as 5, but 10 is regarded as a better by most of the statisticians. The overall number of the items must be a reasonably large and the, uh, it should be normal. Uh, be at least 50. So, there are so many ifs and buts and the conditions for uh, a normal distribution to be applied. That is the n should be large. The frequencies collected should not follow any pattern. They should be collected at random and of course, uh, the data must be in the form of a frequencies and uh, the regrouping uh, etc conditions have to be met. And of course, all the items uh, in the sample must be independent of each other. So, these were the conditions which are very important for, uh, uh, you know, a particular chi-square application to be, uh, you know, uh, actually the application part of the chi-square, these conditions have to be met. Now, I will be giving an example in which uh, the terms and the conditions uh, which we have discussed would be very clear to you. Now, the example states that a die is thrown 132 times with the following results. The number turned up the 1 as 16, 2 as 20, 3 as 25, 4 as 14, 5 as 29 and 6 as 28. Is the die unbiased? So, if this is the question in front of you, then we will be calculating the chi-square as follows. Let us take the hypothesis that the die is unbiased. And this is so, the probability of obtaining any one of the 6 numbers that is 1 by 6 and as such the expected frequency of any one number coming up 132 into 1 upon 6 is 22. Now, we can write the observed frequencies along with the expected frequencies and work out the chi-square test. In the first column on the extreme left, we have the number turned up that is 1 to 6. The observed frequencies are 16, 20, 25, 14, 29 and 28. Expected frequency as we have calculated as 132 into 1 upon 6 is equal to 22. So, the expected frequency in all the cases would be 22. So, O minus E that is the observed frequency minus the expected frequency in the first case is minus 6 followed by minus 2, 3, minus 8, 7 and 6. 
Whereas, if you do the square part of it, uh, it is 6 into 6, 36, 2 into 2, 4, 3 into 3, 9, 8 into 8, 64, 7 into 7, 49, and 6 into 6, 36. So, now is O minus C upon E, that is 36 upon 22, 4 upon 22, 9 upon 22, 64 upon 22, 49 upon 22, and 36 upon 22. So, hence the calculation of the chi-square is equal to 9. So, the degrees of freedom uh, is given in the question as uh, n minus 1, it is equal to 6 minus 1, that is 5. So, with the 5 degrees of freedom, we will be able to calculate the following aspects and the table value of x square for 5 degrees of freedom at 5 percent level of significance is 11.071. Comparing the calculated and the table values of the chi square, we are having the table values in which we compare the values which are being calculated in the using of formula. We find that the value is less than the table value and hence uh, we have to arise due to fluctuations in the sampling. The results thus supports the hypothesis and it can be calculated that die is unbiased. So, the final result has to be done very, very carefully. I will repeat the results how we calculated in the table. The, uh, the example, I want to explain it once again that there are 132 times we have the results in front of us. So, the first thing that you have to do is you have to columnize the, uh, the problem and the first you have to write the turn ups and the second you have to write the observed frequencies. The expected frequency which you have to calculate is 132 into 1 upon 6 that is 22. So, observed frequencies in all cases would be 22. Now, we are calculating uh, O minus E that is the observed minus expected which comes out to minus 6, minus 2, 3, minus 8, 7 and 6. Now, we do the square part of it. So, we get 36, 4, 9, 64, 40, 9 and 36. So, the final calculations is O minus E upon E. So, which is like uh, it is equal to 9. So, now our calculation and the interpretation part of this is that we have to first find out the degrees of the freedom which is equal to n minus 1. So, n here is 6. So, 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So, the number of degrees of freedom would be 5 in this case and hence uh, we now find out the table value of the chi-square. The table value of uh, chi-square with the 5 degrees of freedom and uh, about 5 percent level of significance is 11. So, comparing the calculated and the table values of chi-square, we find the calculated value is less that is 9 uh, than the table value and as such we are coming on to this conclusion that because of the fluctuations in the sample, the, the calculated value is less than the table value and hence we say and it supports the hypothesis that it is uh, the die is an unbiased die. With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this session on chi-square test. Friends, we would be meeting again after a very short break. So, be with us and keep watching us.
Hello friends, welcome to this session where we are discussing on chi-square test. We believe that you might have learnt a lot in previous session. In this session also we are going to discuss in detail on chi-square test. Friends, if you want to ask questions from Dr. Namita Rajput who is our today's guest, then you can contact us through our toll free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. So I would like to request Dr. Namita Rajput to continue further and uh, let us make us understand uh, with the topic uh, the chi-square test hello ma'am welcome to the lecture so before we move on further let me give you a recap of what we did in the previous session so that you have a connect of what we are going to do now we started with the basic concepts called what is a parametric test what is a non-parametric test what is a hypothesis these things are so important uh, for a researcher to understand that if he doesn't know the basics part of it they will not be able to calculate and analyze and interpret the results so with this we are going to start again with the uh, the parametric test uh, the parametric test is uh, you know the test in which the population constant that is the mean standard deviation correlation and of course the standard deviation proportion the data follows a particular established distribution so uh, you know either a normal distribution or a poison distribution or a poison or a binomial distribution so you have to understand this aspect that if the population constants that is the mean standard deviation correlations uh, and other constant they are following a parameter we call it as a parametric test but on the contrary if uh, the population constant that is the mean standard deviation etc they do are not following a particular the particular established distribution we call it as a non parametric test now what is a hypothesis hypothesis is basically the assumption of the population which we are talking about a definite statement which we are giving for the population what is null hypothesis a null hypothesis is a hypothesis in which no association exists between the two cross tabulated uh, variables in the population that is they want to compare the two methods a and b whether a or b is superior to each other or not so the assumption is that both methods are equally good so this assumption is called as a null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis proposes that two variables are related in the population and if we assume that the two methods that is method a is superior than method b then this assumption is called as the alternative hypothesis then we calculated on to the degrees of freedom that is uh, here we are trying to find out r minus 1 and c minus 1 r is a row and the c is a column so here df that is the degrees of freedom is equal to r minus 1 and a c minus 1 so then we find out what is a contingency table which is also called as a association table now basically we uh, tried uh, and capsulate the concept and the meaning of a chi square test the chi square test was uh, you know developed by a carl pearsons in 1900 and uh, there are the particular test is so simple to calculate and understand uh, that uh, we uh, are not bothered about the mathematical calculations because it is a very simple test to calculate and to understand so in this regard uh, uh, we decided on to the important characteristics of a chi square test the test uh, as a non parametric test is based on the frequencies and not on the parameters like mean and standard deviation the test is used for testing the hypothesis and is not useful for estimation and this test can also be applied to a complex contingency table and is a very useful test for the researchers uh, because uh, the test is very important non parametric test no rigid assumptions no calculations easy to understand less mathematic mathematical aspects involved in this characteristics so now we are um, uh, you know able to show you the three bell shaped uh, the three curves not the bell shaped because the bell shape depends upon the degrees of the freedom if it is uh, you know the the concept is greater than 2 uh, if the degrees of uh, freedom is greater than 2 only in that case we have a bell shaped curve so in the first case you can see that x1 x2 and xn they are the independent normal variates and each is uh, distributed normally with zero mean standard deviation x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square is equal to sigma x1 square is distributed as a chi square with n degrees of freedom where n is large there are three important tips which we discussed uh, in the last part of the lecture here the things are very important to be repeated because we would be doing it and taking it further so if the degrees of freedom is greater than 2 we call it as a bell shape if the degrees of freedom is equal to 2 we call it as a l shape with the maximum ordinate at 0 
if the degrees of freedom is less than 2 and greater than 0, we have a L shape with infinite uh, ordinate at the origin. We calculated and discussed upon the application part of the chi square. It is used mainly for three purposes to find out the goodness of the fit, uh, to understand uh, and test the independence of the attributes followed by the test of homogeneity. So, these things are very important to understand. Uh, so, we will be discussing uh, this one by one. Uh, this test enables us to see how well the assumed theoretical distribution such as the binomial, poison or normal fit to be in the observed data. So, you can see the calculation aspect of it x square is equal to sigma o minus e upon e whole square where o is the observed frequency e is the expected frequency and if x square calculated and x square tabulated n minus 1 then the null hypothesis is rejected otherwise accepted. If the null hypothesis is accepted then it is concluded that the given distribution follows a theoretical distribution. The second aspect which we discussed was a test of independence for the attributes. The test enables us to understand and explain whether or not two attributes are associated or not. For example, we may uh, be interested in knowing whether a new medicine is effective in controlling a fever or not. So, chi-square test is very useful. Uh, for example, uh, in such situations we proceed with a null hypothesis that two attributes that is a new medicine and the control of fever are independent which means that the new medicine is not effective in controlling a fever. The chi-square calculated and the chi-square tabulated at certain levels of significance for a given degrees of freedom. The null hypothesis is rejected. For example, the two variables are independent that is the new medicine is effective in controlling the fever and if x-square calculated, x-square tabulated, the null hypothesis is accepted. That is the two variables are independent of each other and the new medicine is not effective in controlling the fever. When null hypothesis is rejected, it can be controlled, concluded that there is a significant association between the two variables under consideration. Then the third aspect which we test today is a test of homogeneity. This test also be used whether the occurrence of the events follow uniformity that is the admission of a patient to the government hospital in all days of week is uniform or not. It can be tested with the help of a chi-square test. So, x square calculated, x square tabulated, then the null hypothesis is accepted and it can be concluded that there is a uniformity in occurrences of the events, that is a uniformity in admission of the patients uh, throughout the week. Here is a very important part where the students have to calculate uh, the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies of the, of the table which is in front of you. Uh, o is the observed frequency, E is the expected frequency and if uh, the two distributions that is the observed and theoretical are exactly alike then x square is equal to 0 but generally due to sampling errors chi square is not equal to 0. These steps uh, the researcher must understand. They have to calculate each and every step so that they are able to find out uh, and come on to the final conclusions. You have to first find out the expected frequency uh, that is the cell frequency that would be expected in a contingency table that is the association table of the two variables under study and uh, they should be statistically independent of each other because uh, if they are not independent of each other then there we cannot use the chi-square test followed by what is the observed frequency. Observed frequency is the actual frequency which is being observed and of course the cell frequency is actually observed in a contingency table. F e is equal to column total rho total upon n. To obtain the expected frequency for any cell in a cross tabulated in which the two frequencies are assumed independent, multiply the rho and the column total for the cell and divide the product by the total number of cases in the table. This is the chi-square distribution. X square is a sigma of F e minus F o whole square upon F e. Now, uh, for any particular test to be applicable, we have to understand the particular conditions to be met. If these conditions are not met, then of course, uh, the, uh, the problematic aspect would be how to, uh, you know, apply a particular test. So, these conditions have to be met. These conditions are also prerequisite for a particular test to be applied. So, the first thing is that the data must be in the form of the frequencies. If the data is not in the form of fre frequencies, then it is a very difficult test to be applied. So, first and the foremost thing which a researcher must understand that if you are, uh, you know, calculating uh, 
or using a chi-square test. The first thing which you have to keep in mind at unless and until the data is in, is in the form of a frequency, you cannot use this particular type of a test. Second is that the data must be independent of each other because if you uh, there is a, some kind of association or a problem between the two, then of course it will be not easier for and not even right to uh, you know the use a chi-square test. The frequency data must have a precise numerical value, must be organized into categories or a group. So, categorization of the data, the frequency part of the data uh, and of course, uh, having a numerical value is an essential condition for a chi-square test to be applied. Because if the data is not in a numeric form or is there any problem in case of uh, the categorization or the grouping of the data, then it will not be uh, a good uh, condition for a chi-square test to be applied. Thirdly, observations recorded and used are collected on a random basis. There should not be any kind of a pattern that you are collecting the data after every particular interval or you have some consensus in relation to type of the data which you are uh, calculating. So, you must have this thing in mind that the data which has to be collected has to be a random basis uh, with a proper grouping, with a proper numerical value, uh, with a proper categorization and of course, the independence uh, of the data has to be there and of course, the essential form of the data to be collected uh, must be in the form of a frequencies. Then of course, all the items uh, in the sample must be independent of each other and uh, there are two more things which you have to be very particular uh, uh, to be kept in mind because they are the essential conditions for the application of the chi-square test. No group should contain very few items say less than 10 in case where the frequencies are less than 10, the regrouping is done by combining the frequencies of adjoining groups so that the new frequencies become greater than 10 and some statisticians must keep in mind the 5 but 10 is regarded as a better by most of the statisticians. So, there is a um, confusion in this regard that uh, some people, some statisticians uh, think that the new frequencies uh, should be 5 whereas the other things that it is 10. But if you have a extensive literature review, the 10 is regarded as a better <coughs> form of for the statisticians uh, to apply this particular chi-square test. Then of course, the n should be large, uh, reasonably large and in this case, it should be normally uh, at least 50. So, that we are able to you know handle this particular test nicely and we are able to calculate the results uh, on the basis of n. If n is large, the better it is because it is going to, uh, you know, have a reality in the results. Now, uh, the, the example which I gave you uh, was a placing of the die or turning up of a tie. It has 6 sides, so total turn ups should be equal to 6. So, if we see the observations uh, in terms of every time we throw a die uh, is coming on to 16, 20, 25, 14, 29 and 8. So, the total turn up was the total number of cases here is 6 that is n is 6. Observe frequencies is given in the question itself that is uh, 16, 20, 25, 14, 29 and 28. Expected frequency is always calculated as follows that is uh, the, the total one number coming up as 162 into 1 upon 6 is equal to 22. So, in this case, uh, the observed frequencies is equal to 22, which is common in all the cases. That is all the six cases which we do. So, now we uh, have a differentiation of the O minus E and of course, O minus E whole square, which gives you the squared number uh, of the observations, which is there in front of you. And of course, uh, uh, O minus E divided by E also, that is 36 upon 22, 4 upon 22, 9 upon 22, 64 upon 22, 49 and 36 by 22. The answer uh, is coming as 9. Hence, the calculated value of chi-square is 9. Now, we have a table value of the chi-square. Uh, if you see the table value of the chi-square, it is coming on to as 11. So, when the calculated value is less than, uh, uh, less than the table value, we are supporting the hypothesis saying that uh, the die is unbiased. So, this is the whole uh, degree of it because uh, the degrees of freedom which we take into consideration is n minus 1. 
the total turn up cases in case of a die was 6 so we deduct number 1 which is calculated as 5. So with the 5 degrees of freedom at 5 percent level of significance uh, the calculated value is 11 whereas the estimated value is uh, only equal to 9 which gives us to this particular type of the conclusion that the die is an unbiased die and we support the hypothesis. Now we come on to a new uh, aspect that is the Yates correction. If in the 2 into 2 con contingency table the expected frequencies are small say less than 5 then chi square test cannot be used. In that case, the direct formula of the chi-square test is modified and given by Yates correction for continuity. X square, if you see on the screen, X square in brackets we see a corrected value which is equal to N minus AD minus BC minus 0.5 N whole square upon R minus R2 CIC2. So this is a Yates correction formula to calculate the chi-square test. Here we are particularly talking about 2 into 2 contingency table which is also called as an association table. The expected frequencies are smaller say less than 5. So if the expected frequency uh, is less than 5, I give you the conditions under which the chi square test can be applied. So we said that anything which is less than 5 we cannot use a chi square. So for this particular uh, a case to be applied in the chi square test we have to apply a corrected Yates correction formula so that we are able to have the upcoming of this uh, and we can over uh, go through this limitation of uh, the, uh, the particular uh, small frequencies which is less than 5. Now we are coming on to a major part of our lecture that what is a limitation of a chi-square test. We have learnt a lot about what is a chi-square test, what are the basic backdrops of it, what are the conditions for it, how do we calculate the chi-square test. Now is the time uh, we must discuss what the limitations of the chi-square test is and under what conditions this is not a suitable method to be applied. So the first is the data is from a random sample, this is the first. If the data is not from a random sample, this particular method of chi-square is difficult to be applied. Second, this test applied in four fouled table will not give a reliable results with one degrees of freedom if expected value in any cell is less than 5. Because in that case, uh, if you remember on the previous slide, we gave you a Yates correction uh, continuity chi-square distribution uh, formula because here uh, the, the frequency, the expected frequency of one cell was less than 5. So this is one of the major limitations that if the, uh, the degrees of the freedom and uh, if it is less than 5 then this particular method is very difficult to be applied. In that case, the Yates correction formula is necessary that is the reduction of the mode that is O minus E by half. Even if the Yates correction, the test may be misleading if any expected frequency is much below 5. In that case, another appropriate test must be applied for. In the contingency tables larger than 2 into 2, Yates correction cannot be applied. Interpret this test with a caution if the sample size or the total number of values is less than 50. Now this particular limitation of the chi-square also calls us on again studying the conditions under which the chi-square can be applied. So I am going to relate the two again. Let us see the conditions first and then we will come on to the next slide of why it cannot be applied. The first condition is that the data which is which has to be collected has to be in the form of a frequency. The data must be independent of each other. Then of course the observations which you are recorded must be from a random sample. And of course uh, any group in which the frequency is less than 10 or less than 5 this particular chi-square test is not useful and not applicable and should not be applied. And of course 
if the n is less than 50 this particular test is also not suitable to be applied so these were the conditions for the application of a chi square test now we'll do the limitation part of it that is uh, in case the data is not collected from a random basis this particular test becomes uh, you know inapplicable followed by uh, if the degrees of freedom uh, in one particular cell the expected value in any cell is less than 5 and uh, in the reality aspects this particular case comes very frequently in which the frequencies is less than 5. So, in this case the Yates correction uh, is very very important uh, to be applied for and even in that case the Yates correction application of the Yates correction formula would be unrealistic to apply because uh, uh, to my knowledge and to my experience uh, we must need a more efficient method in such exceptional cases for a chi-square methods to be applied on it because uh, the basic conditions of the chi-square test is not being followed. Now, if the Yates correction, the test may be misleading in some cases uh, because the expected frequency is much below than 5. So, in that case, another appropriate test should be applied for and in contingency tables larger than 2 into 2, the Yates correction cannot be applied for. Interpret this, uh, uh, you know, test with a caution if the total number of the size is uh, you know uh, is importantly less than 50. Now, see if the n is large than 50 then of course, this particular test is very important to be applied for but if the n is less than uh, 50 in that case uh, it demands for another efficient method uh, to be applied for rather than applying this chi-square methods of uh, distribution. Now, the next uh, limitation is that this test tells us the presence or absence of an association between the events but does not measure the strength of the association. <coughs> so, this is also one of the major limitation that it only tells you whether uh, the two variables are associated or not or whether the association is present or not. So, it only focuses on the presence or the absence but it does not focus upon uh, the strength or the weakness of the relationship or the association between the two variables. So, this is one of the major limitation of uh, application of a chi-square test that it does not give you any kind of a strength uh, of the relationship or the weakness of the relationship but on the contrary it only gives you the presence and the absence of the uh, of these relationships. Now, this test does not indicate the cause and effect relationship if only tells you the probability of occurrence or association by chance. The test is to be applied only when the individual observations of sample are independent which means that occurrence of one individual observation event has no effect on the occurrences of any other observations in the sample under consideration. We have discussed uh, about 4 to 5 points in case of uh, what is the association and disassociation uh, and the limitation aspect of a chi-square method. So, in the simple words, uh, the last three assumptions uh, you know the limitation part we will discuss now. This particular chi-square test of distribution has a major limitation in this regard that it only tells you about the presence and the absence of a relationship of the variables under study. It does not give you uh, the strength or a weakness aspect of the relationship under study. Then of course, uh, this test also does not give you uh, a cause and effect relationship that is because of what reasons uh, and uh, what is what x is causing y or y is causing x. So, it uh, only tells you the probability of the occurrences of association by chance not by any other factor. So, in case you want to understand the cause and effect relationship or uh, in case of the relationship which is beyond chances. So, in that case the application part of the chi-square method of distribution is a very difficult method to be applied for and in for that matter it will not be correct also uh, if the association is uh, uh, the, the kind of a relationship which you are trying to test is of cause and effect relationship because it does not tell you any kind of a relationship of this sort. It only focuses on the presence and the absence and of course, uh, uh, if uh, the, the cause and effect relationship is the, is the markup uh, thing which you have to find out or the focus thing which you have to find out then this particular uh, distribution uh, is not a right kind of a distribution to be applied for the test. Now, the last part is that the test is to be applied 
only when individual observations of the sample are independent. Now, in most of the cases which you are trying to uh, test, uh, the, the kind of independence which you are looking for is not there. So, of course, the independent observations of the sample, if they are not independent of each other, this particular application of a chi-square test is a difficult option to be applied for and a wrong method to be applied for. This means that the occurrence of one individual observation event has no effect on the occurrence of any other event. So, in this uh, kind of uh, uh, you know the factor, the chi-square distribution is a very difficult option to be applied for. So, just let me give you uh, the, the correction part of it. Uh, if the conditions of the chi-square method is not met, that is, I will give you the key points. 1. If n is less than 50. 2. If the sample is not a random sample. 3. If the data is not uh, independent. 4. Uh, you know, if you do not have a proper categorization or a grouping part. Then of course, 5, if the frequencies are less than 5 or uh, in many of the cases it could be larger than 10 also. So, the things which we have discussed here is that uh, these conditions uh, are not met then of course, uh, the application part of the chi-square method is not a good option. Like if the data is not a random sample, if n is less than 50, if you do not have a proper categorization or the grouping of the data and of course, if the contingency table into consideration is greater than 2 into 2, then of course, this method is not a correct method. Um, on the contrary, if you just want to find out a chance factor or if you are trying to find out a cause and effect relationship, this also method is not a suitable method and of course, any other more efficient method is required in that case. So, it has its own limitation, but it has its own beautiful qualities which we have discussed that it is non-mathematical, it is a very frequently used uh, method for testing the hypothesis, it is very good option for the beginners and of course, the strengths are more than the weaknesses of this method. Hence, we uh, make use of this method very, very frequently. So, I hope all these concepts are very clear to you. Uh, in the coming sessions, we will be giving you some kind of hands-on training wherein you can actually associate yourself with the practical examples of the t-test, z-test, chi-square test. These are all methods of hypothesis testing. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a precious session. Friends, if you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then do write to us at info.cec at nic.in. The lecture is going to be uploaded on YouTube soon. Keep watching us, keep writing us. Thank you ma'am. Thank you once again.